almost on time today. <laughs> almost on time. As I eat my gummies. I'm trying something different, a different area. I got me another table from out my garage to go a different route because, listen, schedule is going to get back to normal, maybe close in the fall, but right now we have to compromise. I was looking for my pen, but listen, I'm not going with that stop us. Uh -huh. I'm just going to wait a few minutes. Not that long. I'm not going to keep you guys that long tonight. But this is a word for a wife tonight. And I really want to share this with her. And I just wanted to remind her of God's promises. Um, I just want to remind her of God's promises. So I had to put a little channel of more on here. Hey. You finish what you started. You won't start with me. my guilty pleasures <laughs> I keep telling myself I'm gonna stop eating these one day <clears throat> I've been doing it for a long time y'all like my little dumb bear mm -hmm. all right hello 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 good evening good evening my wise and happy Thursday. It's the countdown to the weekend, y'all. It is the countdown to the weekend. Listen, Coach T here with you on this evening. And I have a word for my wife on this evening that I want to share with you. For the ones who may not know me, my name is Coach T. I am a marriage and wife coach. I coach wives who are um, married to the absent husband. To the husband who may be addicted to abandonment, alcohol, or adultery. And so that is the wives that I coach. And tonight, tonight, I want to share this quick word with you. Like I said, try not to hold you long this evening. Um, we want to just really jump right into it. If you stay on with me from the beginning to the end, I will give you a free session. I will give you a free 30-minute uh, session. But, but, for my wives, a free 30-minute wife session. Um, but you may also, at any time, sign up on my website um, at www.marriagechroniclesbytanika.com to receive um, your free consultation, your free wife consultation, all right? So the 30-minute session is equal to the free consultation as well, all right? So let's talk. Let's talk. I ain't talked to y'all since about, hey, hey, I hadn't talked to y'all since when? Sunday? Listen, I've been like bad this week. When I say bad, I mean, I really have been like bench watching. <clears throat> I've been like bench watching. Like I'm not a TV person. And so um, with this, you know, holiday weekend that we gave, you know, that, that they gave us. I took advantage of it like I really took advantage of it and so I know for some like people like probably already been watching the manifest shows somebody can't even turn my TV around so usually what happens when you got children at your house in the middle of the day um <laughs> I just noticed that my whole TV is, is is moved um but I've been bench watching manifest baby listen I'm hooked I'm hooked okay I'm, I'm absolutely hooked and so I've been just really trying to enjoy that. I hope everyone has had a wonderful weekend, a wonderful um, holiday weekend. Listen, let's talk. Let's talk. I want to talk to his wife tonight. All right, I want to talk to his wife. The one who is going through a season of feeling perplexed. 
the one who is going through a season moments days some months all of a sudden feeling perplexed okay not having any control over her next and really really at a place where she's having to allow god to guide her all right i want to talk to her this to the to her this evening so father god we bless you we love you we thank you jesus for your amazing grace and mercy we welcome you father god into this teaching god may you bless the ones who may receive from you on this evening god i pray that you open their ears to receive from you god open up their spiritual eyes god so they may see your word in a different way from a different perspective god on this evening forgive us jesus for our sins anything we have said did or done knowingly or unknowingly god we just pray god lord and we ask that you would continue to cover us god lord continue to speak through me as I speak to your wise God, as I speak to your daughters. Help me to decrease, Lord, and you increase in the mighty name of Jesus. I bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So we're going to just jump right into it. We're going to just jump right into it. All right. So the box says in 2 Corinthians 4, 8, and I didn't put the other part, but it's actually 8 to 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 to 9. And it reads, we are pressed on every side, but not crushed perplexed but not in despair prosecuted but not abandoned struck down but not destroyed come on jesus and it was so crazy today i want to just give her a shout out real fast um i know she went my one of my um wife clients had reached out to me today and you know just shared me some things with her whatever and i was like guess what bible verse i'm using tonight guess what bible verse i am using tonight and so i shared that that um bible verse with her had no idea um like i said sometimes god give me things and you know i already have it ahead of time sometimes they come you know as i meditate and do my devotion time um so this was one of those things like during my time of devotion god had kept on leading me to the book of philippians um and i didn't understand that part but once i read it i understood and i got my answer so um this was for you. This is for you. All right. So let's share a little bit about my transparency. You know, I always try to give you the truth. I know I use my clients sometimes and I can share with you um, about otherwise, but I really, really like to share with wise my transparency as a wife coach because I was you. Okay. Sometimes I still am you, you know, it just depends on the season that I'm in. All right. Um, I am his wife. I am his wife. And so, um, I like to share my transparency just to help wives to understand that, hey, I understand what you're going through. I understand what you're going through because I've been there, done that, walked down that aisle. I know how that goes and I can help you. I can help you in your journey. And so this is one of the reasons why I share transparency, why I try to keep it 100 with my wives on the regular. Not just my wives, but anyone that I come in contact with in coach, I really try to make sure that I share transparency with them because people get enough of the foolery, the lies, the fakeness. I just feel like people need truth, um, need realness, you know, like just be straight up with me. And so that's what I like to do. So let's go down memory lane. Let's go down memory lane. I can't even begin, and I'm reading but talking at the same time. I can't even begin to explain this feeling. Perplex, perplex, perplex. But I think I can mostly relate it during the months I labored in prayer for my husband when he was laying up in the hospital bed. Like that was one of the times when I know that thing was on my back. <laughs> that thing was on my back, honey. Okay. I remember laboring in prayer um, in that hospital room um, while he was in that bed. And, and, and I say this, you know, with sincereness, like no wife should ever have to watch her husband suffer like that no why should ever have to watch her husband suffer like that and um that was hard that was a perplex season for me but but i thought i was going to just stop there and the lord dropped in my spirit about the summertime he dropped in my spirit about the summertime and so this one i want to share in a little bit more in detail and i want to kind of share with you how um i felt like god walked me through this season of perplex and i pray i pray that it blesses you as well so there was another time when I was going through a season of perplex, per, being perplexed, and God silenced my voice, all right? God silenced my voice as um, I watched my husband leave and return on his own terms. Um, this was a season when I knew that monkey was riding his back, all right? And when I'm, I, I use the word monkey, I'm going to talk about that monkey one day on this video, okay? <laughs> I knew that monkey was riding his back during that season, okay? And um, we'll go into that 
that, that monkey part at a, later, at a later time because he was not like human like I really feel like he was like somebody else he was just not human all right and everything in me wanted to scream wanted to yell out stop save yourself it's a trap you know I wanted to like voice my opinion um share with him you know like you going on the wrong path you know this is wrong like share with him my feelings and how i feel about it and, and you know all those types of things and the lord would not allow me the lord would not allow me okay instead he gave me the supernatural strength to go on okay he empowered me to maintain our home our children and my mind because when you are in a season of perplex when you are going through a season of you know of being perplexed you have to understand your mind is all over the place, okay? Because you don't know what's happening to you. You don't know what's happening to you. You don't know what's happening to you, okay? So I, I praise Jesus for him helping me in that in that season. I sat in his presence. I sat listening to his words. I sat listening to the scriptures. Um, I meditated on scriptures. I woke up mumbling scriptures. That's how much I was, you know, um, surrounding myself in God's, you know, word. Um, I went in, I went, I went in during that season because there's nothing more, um, what, what's the word? There's nothing more. I don't want to say, I don't, I, uncomfortable would be a nice word, but there's nothing more demeaning, demeaning out. That's come on. Thank you. Holy spirit. There's nothing more demeaning to know exactly what's taking place with your husband know exactly what you know especially when you are you know god is speaking to you and is sharing things with you or giving you visions or you know things like that it's nothing more demeaning to know your spouse is making a decision to leave the house disrespect the house not come home stay out all night man that is the listen talk about disrespect on another level that's disrespect okay on a whole nother level and so um, I stay in God's presence though. I stay in God's presence and God helped me. He was the one who helped me. That's why when I come on and share with you about God's word, I am so for real. That's the only thing that helped me. I know, um, God's word is not, you know, um, I have think Pastor Darius say, he said, you know, God's word is not therapy, but it's very, it's very, um, therapeutic. It's very therapeutic. And it's very encouraging that it will help you. Okay. And so that's what God's word has been for me. Um, I would hear the Lord tell me, I got this, I got this, I got this. He's going to come to himself. I got this. And I remember one time just being like, you know, you know, you get into moments of Lord, like, what is you talking about? Like, this is not even making sense now. Like, it's not even making sense at this point. What are you saying? And I would hear God saying, I got this, I got this. All right. In my mind, I was like, yeah, right, whatever. Okay. But I knew, I knew God was for me I knew God was for my marriage okay so during this time I was mentoring this young lady and we went for lunch and she was a wife as well um but I was mentoring her God gave me a season where it was just me and her you know for for a good little while and so we gave, we you know we gained a relationship and you know build up trust and things like that and so she told me and she was a woman of God as well she was a woman of God and so um she told me that she had a book for me she said she had a book to me and so I was like, the mentee is giving the mentor a book. <laughs> like, I'm supposed to be pointing to you and you are pointing to me. But sometimes God does that. And so she shared with me that the Lord told her to give me this specific book. The Lord told her to give me this book. And once I finished um, reading this book, my situation would be better. Now, mind you, I did not share with her my situation. I did not share with her what I had going on. I didn't share with her those things. But... Um, it's like she felt it. She felt it and she knew it. So she told me, she said, once you finish reading this book, your situation is going to be better. All right. Your situation is going to be better. All right. And so, um, like I said, I trusted her. She was a woman of God. I, you know, we had a relationship. We had built that relationship together. So I took the book. I took the book. Now, it seems like the more I read this book, <laughs> the worse my situation got. The more I read this book, the longer this man stayed out. <laughs> The more I read this book, it was just, it was like, the more I was reading this book, the, the worse things got, in other words, okay? And so, but one day, come on, Jesus, but one day, but one day, he came to himself, okay? He came to himself. Um, he had started coming back home like normal again, um, and he didn't leave. He didn't leave. Um, 
at first it was one day, then it was the second day, then the next day I know it ended up it was a week. And he, you know, eventually started to, you know, be back on his regular routine and um, came to himself. Um, once I finished the book and it was getting close, you know, for the kids to get ready to go back to school, shortly after that, um, that's when things did get better. That's when things did get better. And he and I began to, you know, communicate again and get back to a better place. All right. And so that was a very, very, very perplex season for me. All right. It was very perplex. And sometimes when we are in seasons like that, we have to really allow God to walk with us on that journey. We have to really allow God to help us. And so one of the things I always try to share with my wife or anyone that I coach is what was the lesson? Ask God, what is it that he wants you to get from this? What is it that he wants you to get from out of this situation? Because a lot of times when God is allowing something, he's allowing it for a reason, okay? Things don't just happen. You know, a lot of people say, oh, hey, that's just happened. No, things don't just happen. Things happen for a reason. And so I'm that coach. I want my I want the ones that I coach to think. I want them to think different. I want them to dig in. I want them to sit down and spend that time with God so they can get to that place of what is what is the reason? What is the reason behind this? Okay. And so the lesson I learned, the lesson I learned, but let me first say this. <laughs> let me first just say this part. Um, I didn't know I had the capacity to even keep my mouth closed that long. Okay. I, I didn't know that. When you seeing that type of behavior in front of you and when you see that type of you know when you see something like that happening and, and it's damaging it's damaging um i didn't even know i knew how to be quiet that long <laughs> i didn't know oh i do know how to be quiet i do know how to really be quiet but i know god helped me in that situation okay my background is raw okay we don't let people walk over us and say whatever to us we defend ourselves at all costs and so it was in that season where I really had to release what I was used to. I had to release my background. I had to release what I, you know, what I knew. I had to release how I was brought up. And I had to really, really allow God to help me. And this is why I tell um, why it's all the time. You have to get to a place. It's going to come a season and time when you are going to have to break a loose from your family, from your friends, from the ones who's probably been with you in the beginning and may not necessarily can be with you, you know, going forward. And so there will come a time when you will have to, it's going to just be you and God. When they talk about the wilderness, listen, it is serious, okay? It is serious. Um, God silenced my tongue, okay? He did it, not me. He did it. Um, if the dictionary, <laughs> I thought this was funny. If the dictionary needed a picture of meekness and submission, it would not have been me. <laughs> It would not have been me, okay? I was not the picture of submission and meekness, okay? I was not that one. But I felt like God taught me how to navigate, how to navigate through that suffer wrong with his strength, okay? God will give you his strength, wife. He will give you his strength. All you have to do is ask him. All you have to do is keep on going to him. And even if it don't happen right away, even if it don't happen the first day, even if it don't happen in the first week, even if it happened in the first two weeks, consistency is the key on this journey. Consistency. The Bible talks about that in Matthew when it says, keep on knocking, keep on coming to that door, keep on keep on asking, keep on knocking. Don't stop, don't stop. God is going to come to your rescue. And so I like to just emphasize that part. If that feeling has not changed yet, if nothing has not turned yet, continue to be consistent in seeking out God. Continue. The Bible tells us in Matthew 6, I think, what, 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and everything else will add unto that. Keep seeking him and those things will be added unto you. God is going to come to your rescue. All right? I'm a witness. I am a witness. And so suffering through a... um Suffering through a, a something, you know, a, a suffered wrong. And, you know, especially when you know, I didn't do nothing wrong. Like, I don't deserve this. <laughs> like, I ain't, I ain't did anything. To, it's one thing if I did something to deserve it. It's like, okay, that's one thing. But I ain't, I ain't do nothing wrong. Why I have to go through this? Like, why am I going through this, right? Um, I had to, I, I didn't know during that time that that was a battle that I did not have to fight. I did not have to fight. And like I shared, I've shared before, but I still had to show up. Okay, I did not have to fight that battle, but I still had to show up and I had to show up by keeping my mouth closed. I had to show up by allowing God to do. It. I had to show up by not getting involved, by not saying nothing, by not giving my opinion, by not jumping in because they bad. Okay, <laughs> see, that's how murder charges happen. Okay, <laughs> 
that's how murder charges happen. And so I allowed the Holy Spirit to help me on that journey. And he did just that. All right. And so how do you do that? How do you do that? How do you do that? So like I told you earlier, I was reading in the book of Philippians. I couldn't understand why the Lord was sending me to the book of Philippians. I'm, I'm, I'm usually in the New Testament reading. Um, and Philippians only have four chapters, but um, it's not one of the, you know, one of my most popular Bible chapters that I read, but the Lord was leading me to read in the book of Philippians. And so Philippians chapter 4, 11 and 13 says, and I'm going to read for the New Living trans Transaction, the, the New Living Version. How about that? <laughs> and it says, not that I was ever in need, not that I was ever in need, for I have learned how to be content with whatever I have. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it is with a full stomach. And I say that I learned to live whether I had my husband or a empty, whether if I did have my husband. All right. With plenty or little, for I can do everything through Christ who strengthens me. All right. Who gives me strength. I can do everything through Christ who strengthens me. Learning contentment through Christ has changed my life, all right? Learning contentment through Christ has changed my life, and it will change yours too. One of the words that I, you know, sometimes use when I speak to my wives is about the spirit of entitlement, the spirit of entitlement, and so many wives feel like they are entitled especially especially when they have been wronged they feel that they are entitled especially when i i didn't do anything to deserve this type of treatment they automatically put up this 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 sign saying you know i'm entitled to, to this okay i'm entitled to feel this way i'm entitled to behave this way i'm entitled to you know have these feelings but we have to always remember that we are all saved by grace we are all saved by grace and um during my time of you know like i said meditating during my time of just you know working on myself and you know really having god to help me and you know on my season i i learned that i had the the gift of mercy and that's not a gift that a lot of people have that's not a gift that a lot of people have and so one of the things i would encourage my wife to do especially if you are in a place where you are you know wanting God to restore your marriage and you want God to get you back to a healthy place, I would encourage you to pray and ask God to give you the spirit of mercy, all right? To give you the spirit of mercy. That was something that I discovered as I worked on me during my time of separation from my husband, all right? And so I want to share with you three things. I want to share with you three things you can do when going through a season of being perplexed, all right? The first thing, gird up your lions. Gird up your lions. Hello, hello, hello. I can't reach that far to point. So I'm going to say hello over here. <laughs> I don't even know who's the person that's hanging on on um, still. But um, hello and thank you. I appreciate it. Um, all right. So gird up your lions. Gird up your lions. And I'm going to talk about that out. It talks about that in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. And 13 says, <coughs> excuse me. 13 says, wherefore, gird up the lions of the lions of your mind. Be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be bought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. In other words, trust God's plan, wife. Trust God's plan. All right. You have to gird up your line, the lions of your mind. Be sober. Continue to hope until the end. Don't ever stop hoping that uh that God can't do what he has already promised you that he can do and he will do, okay? Um hope to the end for the grace that is brought unto you and the revelation of Jesus Christ, all right? Trust God's plan, all right? Trust God's plan. So the first thing I would encourage us to do is to gird up their lines. All right? Number 2. Stay grounded. Stay grounded. Get back to your solid rock place. Get back to your foundation. All right. Matthew 7 and 24 and 27 says anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise like a person who builds a house on solid on a solid rock. Though the rain comes it torrents and the flood waters rise and the winds beat against the house. It won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. But anyone but anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish like a person who builds a house on sand. 
When the rains and floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crush. A lot of times, when the season of perplex come into the wife, into the life of a, a, a wife, and she have not been in that place of of of, of or in that you know in her study, or she haven't been spending that time with God, or she haven't been meditating with God. We don't know. You don't. You never know when that season is going to come upon you. You don't know. It's not. Like, it's like you you know. You know. Sometimes you can feel certain things. You know, God may say a thing or here. You know, give you a dream or a vision thing, but you don't know the exact season of when this thing is going to come on you. And so this is why it's so important. This is why I drive my wives to make sure that you're spending that devotion time make sure you're getting that devotion time in with god even if it's nothing about five minutes three minutes whatever getting some time with god getting something in your spirit to hold you through that day and don't miss a day don't miss a day okay because it is going to come a time where something is going to happen and you have to be ready you have to be ready you don't want to be uh, uh, like this house they just explained, you know, built on sand and then end up colla collapsing. And that's what happened a lot of times because a lot of wives are not in position. They feel they going through life, they going on, things are good. They or or maybe they have gotten to a place where things are good, things are better, things are you know healthier, or, you know, going down a, a, a right track. But the Bible always tells us to be sober, or be you know, be on the lookout. You know, we have a, 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 a enemy that's roaring that looks to take take us down at any given time. So you have to be on the lookout at all times, and that means you can't there's just certain things that you just can't indulge in there's just certain things that you just can't do there's just certain things that you just can't participate in like i said i'm not normally a uh tv person i don't really watch the tv like that or whatever but i do i try to find something that's you know decent enough um on tv to watch and so you have to really be careful what you give attention to you know you have to really be careful of what you pay attention to because the enemy is looking for any opportunity to get a hold to you Okay, especially when he know God is getting ready to do something amazing in your life. He's looking for an opportunity. So you have to be on watch. You can't go everywhere. You can't um, be in every conversation. You can't, you know, show up at, at, at every party or every place. You can't do certain things. God is living on the inside of you. And so you have to, you have to be on watch. You have to be on God. When you are in that season of, you know, really trying to hear from God and see what he's doing, you have to be on watch. So when every time a victory come, get ready for something else to come right after that, okay? <laughs> the Bible tells us we go from glory to glory to glory to glory. So you got this victory coming, guess what? Right after that victory, something else, another circumstance, a trial is coming through, okay? So you have to be on watch. You have to be on watch. You have to constantly cover yourself with God's blood and ask him to really help you and walk with you. Can we avoid this season? Absolutely not. We absolutely not. We absolutely cannot. You cannot avoid this season. This is part of God's process. God takes his children through this process because he has to see and know if we are ready. He wants us to see and know what we are. He wants us to be aware of what we are. And he needs to know, are you ready for that next? Are you ready for the next thing? Okay. Which brings me to number three. All right. Number three, don't quit. Don't quit. There was a gospel song that um, was out, and I don't know who sang the song or whatever, but um, the words were said, you know, don't give up, don't you quit, it's only a test you're going through, it's only a test you're going, something like that, it was an old song, but I just remember those words, just, you know, don't you quit, don't give up, this is only a test, don't you quit, don't give up. This is only a test. You have to understand trials come to test you. It's, it is part of the test. God silenced his voice sometimes during those testing seasons to see how you want to handle that, how you want to maneuver through those things, how you want to get through. But if you have been studying him, if you have been in his word, if you have been in his presence, you would get through it. And one of the things I always tell my wife is don't run from your trial. Don't run from your test. Stand up to it. Stand up to it. The, the, the enemy wants us to be in fear. He wants us to be in fear. He wants us to be in anxiety. He wants us to lose our minds. That's what he wants, okay? But you have to talk back to your circumstance. You have to you have to um, call your day for it. You have to call your summer for it. You have to call um, um, your week. You have to call your month. You have to you'll speak over it. No, today, today I'm walking in peace. Today, I'm not going to be moved by the foolery. Today, I am not going to settle for less than God's best. Today, I am not going to be interrupted by what the enemy is trying to do. I can't cancel the enemy's plan with the blood of Jesus. I send the fire of God to cancel every plan to burn it into pieces. I send for God's angels to watch over me, to monitor over me, to monitor over my children, to guide me, to keep me, to walk with me. You have to speak back 
to your circumstance because if you don't it will take you out i'm here to tell you <laughs> i thought i went down a few times i think i did i told y'all that before <laughs> i was like oh lord jesus come i'm falling <laughs> It will take you out. You have to. But then there have been times when I got into that place again. You know, it don't happen just one time. This is an ongoing process. Um, because we are always, we are always growing. We're always changing. Something's always, you know, happening in our life. God is always trying to better us and make us look more like his son. And so I remember falling. <laughs> and I remember like, oh, Jesus, help me. But then I also remember the time when... Um, I seen God come through. I, I, I remember the time when I, you know, I stood up to my giant. I, I seen God change um, me from glory to glory. I seen, you know, the process. I seen me, you know, starting out as that, you know, caterpillar and then turning into that butterfly. I seen that as well. And so, um, yeah, you have to, you have to show up. You have to, you have to face it. You have to speak back to your circumstances. Okay. You have to speak back to it. Um, the season of being in the season of perplexed is your testing season. Okay, it's your testing season. It's a season where God sees if you're ready for your next. I know a lot of times I hear me talk about next and you know moving on to your next assignment, what God has for you to do. Um, this is big for me. This is big for me because if you are not investing in yourself, you don't know what you're supposed to be doing. You don't know what your next is. Some people don't know what their purpose is in life. They're just going through life, doing the work, doing they, you know, they nine to five, Monday through Friday. Day, the weekend come we might chill we might go out to eat we might do this we might hang out with friends and it's the same routine so you get into this rut of doing the same thing over and over again and then you feel like is this all to life is this is this all there is to life and you have to really really push yourself out there to um see what what god has for you you know you don't want to get to heaven one day and god like i had all this whole table laid out for you and you you didn't take advantage of it you didn't you didn't you didn't take no time out to invest in yourself that's why it's so important for you to do that for you to find out what god want me to do in my life all right that what God want me to do my life. So this is your testing season. It's a season where God sees if you're ready for your next. Are you ready? And this is a question I ask my wife all the time, especially in uh, my wife sessions. Are you ready for your husband to come back home? Are you ready to go back home to your husband? Like, are you really, really think if right now God say today, today is the day. Are you ready? Like, are you really ready for that, for that change? Can you nurture your husband's heart that the way that he needs it? Um, without receiving anything in return, like can you really give him that 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 love without you know expecting anything back from him in return? Are you capable of loving and forgiving him even though he shows no sign of change? You know, and I say I ask these questions not because we are perfect. I tell my all the time, man, because I said I talk to myself. Okay, like I I do that. That helps me. I don't know about nobody else, but for me, that helps me. That that helps me process things. Okay, um, especially a person like me who I'm a like I'm a I'm a thinker, and so because I'm a thinker, I have to talk back to me. <laughs> you have to talk back to me, and so um, this is not to say that you're perfect. You're not gonna you're not gonna have moments of you know despair. You're not gonna have moments of agony. You're not gonna have moments of you know where you feel like you failed. You're not gonna have moments of feeling like okay, this ain't gonna work, Jesus. This is not to say that. This is saying, are you ready for that? Can you handle that? Are you willing to do those things, okay? Um, are you willing to sacrifice your life to give him a new life? Are you willing to lay your life down for him? Are you willing to say, you know what? I'm going to let him be whatever he needs to be and get to the place where he needs to get to until God gets to him. And I'm going to continue to go on. Are you going to allow him to have you in that same stuck place day after day, month after month, year after like year? It's the same routine every time, over and over again. Are you going to go backwards? Are you going to go backwards? Can you help your husband get to the cross? And are you willing to lead him to salvation? And that's a question that I don't think wives really sit down and take the time out to answer. Like, are you willing to help him? A lot of wives say, well, well Jesus is the one who saves. <laughs> Jesus is the one who saved. I don't say Jesus is the one who saved. And that's true. He is the one who saves. But sometimes he will use you to help your husband get there. He will use you, wife, to help your husband get there. And this is why on all of my shirts, on all of my uh shirts, and, and this is why I this is where his wife come from. It comes from this Bible verse, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 16a. And it says, 
um, this is my his wife motto. This is my his wife motto. It says, how do you know, wife? How do you know whether you will save your husband? How do you know? How do you know whether or not you would be the one that God uses to save your husband? You probably say, well, why me? Like, he got his mama them. He got them over there. He got people at his job. He got all these other people that he come in contact with. Why me? Why me? That is the question. And you really need to sit down and ask God why. Why, would, why did he choose you to be his wife? Why did he give you those divine orders? Why is he... Um, um, leading you in that direction for you to help your, your, your husband get to him. The Bible tells us as a wife, we have an obligation. We have an obligation. It's in his written word that we are supposed to help our husbands get to Christ. And the only way we can help our husbands get to Christ is if we are with Christ ourselves. We have to make sure that we are with Christ. We have to make sure that we are walking that wall. We got to make sure that our light is shining before men so that they can see Christ. We have to make sure that, that our line al aligns with Christ so that he can see that. And the nagging, the crying, the uh, the emotional roller coaster, the let's just have sex and, you know, make it, you know, make it even, the, you know, or even a lot of people, a lot of wives, they just, you know, just let you have your way type of thing. No, sometimes there is a turn off. There is a cut off. I'm going to allow you your season of foolery and let God do whatever he's going to do in this season. I'm going to shut down. I'm going to deflate. I'm going to turn off my modem. I'm going to invest in myself and see what it is that God wants me to do in my life. I want to see what God is saying for me to do. I want to see what God is showing me in my match. I want to see what my role is as your wife. I want to see what my role is. Is there anything that God is asking me to do? Is there anything that God is leading me to do? Um, how can I help you? How can I serve you? How can I be better to you? And man, when I tell you, God has an answer for you every single time. God has an answer for you every single time. All you have to do is keep knocking, keep seeking, keep going to him, being consistent, being persistent, going over and over again. My favorite, one of my favorite Bible stories in the Bible is about the, the lady who went to the, to the judge and told the judge, listen, I need you to get 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 rid of this foolery i need you to get rid of this foolery in, in my life i need you to get rid of this you know get rid of this foolery and she went to him consistently over and over again then you had the other lady who went to jesus and said look jesus i need you to um come and help my daughter you know my daughter is is is, 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 is acting crazy i need you to come and help my daughter and when i tell you jesus made her feel smaller than small but she humbled herself you know why she humbled herself because she needed something different she needed something different. And it's not until you get to that place when you need something different when you're going to be ready to make that change. That lady was not willing to go back home and deal with the same thing over and over again. Go through the same routine over and over again. That that lady who went to that judge was like, no, you won't change this situation. I'm not going to leave from here until you change the situation. And why? I'm telling you. You have to be that same way. You have to make sure you have to be that that consistent when it comes to God. God, you said that He was gonna change. Lord, you said that His heart was gonna be better. Lord, you said that He was gonna be saved. God, you said that things will get better. God, you said that this is not my ending. You said you have to remind God of His word. You have to be persistent. God wants you to know that. Are you listening to me? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you believing what I'm saying when I'm saying it to you? Are you taking my the the instructions that I have given to you? Have you taken those instructions and, and, and meditated on those instructions? Have you sat down with me? Have you spent time with me? Do you hear me when I'm speaking to you? Are you getting the signs? God wants you to be consistent. God wants you to invest in yourself. God wants you to study your role. God wants you to know who it is that you are. Yes, you are his wife, but there is you being his wife is connected to something else. You being his wife is connected to whatever else God wants you to do. You being his wife is God saying, that's just part of the puzzle. That's just a small piece of the puzzle. There is more. There is so much more, all right? And so I want to encourage my wife. I want to encourage my wife. If you have not already, if you have not already and you need help on this journey, I want to encourage you to sign up for your Her Boniency Boots. Sign up for your Her Boniency Boots. Um, at this time, at this time, her bonus is we went from nine weeks to five weeks. Reason being, reason being, I noticed a change. I noticed a difference with one of my clients um, in what was more effective and not as effective. And so her bonus boost is a five week. It's a five week self-care or soul care journey. It's a five week because one of the things I noticed that wives are needing they need that support they need to get it out they need to talk it out they need that one-on-one -on -one. they need that 
um, up close, that, that, that up close with their, with their coach. They need that. And so sign up, sign up at www.marriagechroniclesbytanika.com. Sign up for your, it's only five weeks. It's a five week self-care, soul care um, program for the wives who are struggling in this area. Your husband is absent. And when I say absent, he can be right there in the house, laying in the bed with you next to you every single day and not available. He has abandoned you. Adultery has taken place. He has become addicted to um, other substance. God is saying, I have something I'm trying to get to you by, but you're not going to get it on your own. You need support. You need support. All right. So if you have not signed up, sign up today at www.marriagechroniclesbytanika.com. Listen, I have one person on here now and I don't know who it is. If you would say hello or wave again or something so I can know. Um... <laughs> Who I need to inbox so I can um, send you over some information to get you set up for your free session. I would love to do that. Um, if you're interested in it, I would love to do that. But I don't know who you are because I have like a whole lot of people on here and a lot of hands that's waved. But it's showing on the one at the top. Um, or you can just inbox me if you want to just inbox me separately. You can do that. Hi! <laughs> That's you. Okay. I will send you a message. I will send you a message to get you set up and we would go from there. Okay. I was like, I was wondering who that was still hanging with me. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. All right. Listen, I will talk to you guys soon. I got, I hope you have a rest of uh, a wonderful week for the rest of the week. Um, I will talk to you guys maybe on Saturday, maybe on Saturday, possibly Sunday. It just depends. All right. Enjoy the rest of the week. Enjoy your weekend. All right. Talk to you soon. Blessings.